new kid a lot. I moved around quite a bit as a kid and was in four different elementary schools by the time I got to sixth grade. I was the kid trying to figure out who to play with, whether it was a tetherball school or a four square school, and which Lisa Frank folders were the coolest. <laughs> I managed to figure out how to fit in into each place, and then it was time to leave. Even when I landed at my final elementary school, it was soon time to transition to middle school the next year. Middle school is the time that no one fits in. But we're all trying our hardest and watching each other for cues on how far to roll up our shorts, what makeup is cool, and how to wear our hair. After all the moves my family made, we landed in Orange County, California, the OC. <laughs> Now, most of the girls I went to middle school with looked like mini real housewives. <laughs> they had stick straight, platinum blonde hair, they all played soccer, and somehow knew exactly how to apply that limited to glitter eyeshadow perfectly on those lids to sparkle. Compared to them, I was more of the before the makeover Anne Hathaway in Princess Diaries. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed, but I have curly hair. <laughs> My ringlets showed up sporadically since I was a baby. Aww. But middle school is where the, is where the frizz-filled spirals really made their debut. And like most people, I always wanted the type of hair that I didn't have. The grass was always greener on the other side. Even my mom, with not one kink in her hair, did everything to get curls in her hair. Supposedly, I was lucky to have curls, but I too wanted what I didn't have. That Topanga hair. <laughs> the brush your fingers through the top, straight, long, luscious hair. Those girls who could toss their hair back and forth like an herbal essence commercial. They had it all. They seemed carefree because their hair didn't take hours to dry or pounds of product to hold it together. Having the ability to have your hair air dry and you'd know exactly what it would look like, the dream. But I had curly hair, the kind of hair that hurt when my friends tried to braid it because it was always so tangly. So I did all the things I could do to those, so I did all the things I could do to my locks, including straightening it with one of those con air straighteners that barely kept it straight before even leaving the house and putting so much product in it to keep it from frizzing that it always looked wet. If I did wear it curly, don't you worry, I strained those bangs that I definitely cut myself. <laughs> I went through years of trying to look like anything but what I was because I always felt like the new kid trying to fit in with everyone else. For years, I got my hair cut as if I had straight hair, pretending I would maintain said haircut pretending for an hour that I was like everyone else who had straight hair. I walked out of every one of those haircuts feeling so cute and confident, but with the first wash, my fake straight hair would be a distant memory and I would look in the mirror, grab my Pantene mousse to tame my frizz-kissed frizz -kissed tresses. I was a new kid again when I moved to the Bay Area for college, but this time I started seeing more and more people wearing their naturally curly hair with pride. These people looked confident and cool, like Topanga. <laughs> I wanted to feel like that. And thus my journey began to find the perfect curly cut. I decided no more fake straight hair. I was in a new place with new people. It was time for a new me. My first attempt at owning these spirals was with a hairdresser recommended by a friend who was part of the Coiled Locks crew. Hers were slightly different from mine, but coiled nevertheless. My friend's locks were gorgeous, silky smooth, and seemingly effortless to achieve just what I wanted. I thought, if she sees this hairdresser and her hair looks like that, I'm bound to look just like her. I entered the salon, nervous but excited to try something new, owning the fact that my hair needs were a little bit different than a wash, a cut, and a blow dry. He started out with a similar pattern as my past experiences, but this time he finished it while cutting it dry. 
this is how it should be done. I left that day more excited about my curly hair, a little bit more confident, but I washed it out. And as I did, I washed everything good he had done away. When I reached back out for help, I found out that he had moved away. He was gone. He made my curls bounce, and then he bounced. <laughs> I was back to feeling like a middle schooler fumbling with her hair product without a clue in the world. I guess he's allowed to move away, but I was back on the hunt for the perfect cut. A year passed, and it was time to give my attention to my ringlets again. Another friend recommended her hairdresser, and I gave her a shot. The hairdresser exuded confidence and told me she loves the ringlet rich strands and has them herself, but she straightens them. I shared with her what I wanted, and today I wanted something new. Curly bangs! The process began, and she began to chop my special spirals. I started to think, this is getting short, <laughs> like really short. Oh my god. <laughs> OK, so I was shaking underneath my cape, but not wanting to hurt my hairdresser's feelings, um, I casually shared, um, hey, I think um, this is getting like a little bit short, uh, as my ringlets bounced up tightly to my ears. She assured me that this was exactly what we had talked about and not to worry. But at the end of our session, I was disappointed and hurried out with a thanks and promptly cried as soon as I left the salon. I texted her feedback a few days later that uh, maybe next time I don't want it this short. And she responded with, don't worry, hair grows back. <laughs> a brutal blow to this wounded, curly-headed soldier. I lost hope of finding that feeling I had had just once before, and a love for my challenging tresses. It took me a while to take another leap into the coil quest, but my desire to feel confident and carefree overtook me. This time, I went rogue, and I found a salon on my own, and I booked with a new person said to be very good at the curly craft. I showed up on the day of my appointment, and immediately was told that I'd be seeing somebody else. <laughs> Already so nervous and uncomfortable, I asked, does this person know about the twisted tendrils? And they confidently told me he sure does. So I went in hoping for the best. A bald man with short, straight, and salt and pepper hair coming towards me, coming out the sides of his head, came over to welcome me. I thought, OK, all right, maybe this guy is the best curly hair cutter I've ever met in my life. So I share some pictures of the look I'm going for and tell him, let's do this. I put my trust in him as he hacked away little by little for an hour. I'm underneath my cape convincing myself to stay cool. He knows what he's doing. Watching him take scissors to my wet hair over and over again, I'm starting to sweat. He starts drying my hair, burns my scalp, and my hair starts to turn into the shape of a triangle. And the bottom <laughs> layer, the bottom layer is somehow straight, and it's frizzy. I felt like I had steam coming out of my ears, and my emotions finally overtook me. Stop. You don't know what you're doing, and we're done here. I stood up for my ringlets for the first time. I took off my cape, I grabbed my stuff, and I offered to pay. He told me it was no charge, so I slammed $20 on the counter, and I left. <laughs> this, this felt like that moment in Legally Blonde, where Elle Woods is sitting in the nail salon, upset that being a lawyer is like not going well, um, and about to give up. And her professor is there and says, if you're going to let one prick ruin your life, then you're not the girl I thought you were. <laughs> so a few minutes go by, and I remember a friend with the kinkiest of coils gave me a recommendation for her hairdresser. With the little hope I had left and adrenaline pumping through my veins, I quickly went to her website and booked an appointment for five days later. It was a Friday morning. I walked into the salon in San Francisco, and I was greeted by a full salon of people with all different types of coils and kinks and spirals, both cutting hair and getting their hair cut. Suddenly, I felt like the heavens were opening up that I was in the place I was supposed to be. The hairdresser I met with, funnily enough, the only one in the salon without curls, was a small, energetic, and kind woman. 
She welcomed me with open arms and started to ask me questions, and she touched my hair and told me how amazing my luscious locks were. My guard came down. I shared with her some of my previous awful experiences and what I was hoping for, and she took me in like a lioness cares for her cub. <laughs> this experience was like, was unlike all of the others. I didn't feel nervous underneath my cape. I felt taken care of. I felt empowered. I felt seen. This woman is and will forever be my fahari godmother. <laughs> That day, I walked out of the salon loving how I felt and how I looked for the first time in a long time after a cut. Was I like those carefree cool girls? <laughs> Being different and trying to fit in has been a consistent part of my life. As we all learned from the movie Mean Girls, fitting in isn't always the best. Rather, finding what makes you different and loving it, embracing it, is really what's special. Fitting in isn't all it's cracked up to be, and with hair like this, I was born to stand out. Molly Shapiro!